We're very thrilled today that um, we have with us a very special person, Dr. David Rose. I like to call him a scientist with compassion. He's not your typical scientist. If I had just said we have a scientist coming to speak to you, you might have gotten a little anxious. But we have a scientist who has truly affected the lives of kids with disabilities very directly. I'm not going to take any more time away from him because I know we're running a little bit behind. But David is just an incredible guy. He's helped to found something called CAS, the Center for Applied Special Technologies in Wakefield, but really is a national leader and has helped to design school curricula around the notion of universal design for learning, and he's going to explain what that means. He has a degree from Harvard, actually two degrees from Harvard, one from the college and one from the graduate school, and he's also a graduate of Reed College. I'm going to let David have the time to share with us the important things that he's discovered. David Rose. Uh, thank you. It's wonderful to be here, and uh, it's great to see uh, a lot of old friends. And uh, we learned a lot from uh, the O'Hearn School as well. It's great to see a film, uh, Bill and all of the staff there. Um, so I'm going to, we're a little behind, so I'm going to try to move quickly. Um, I think quite a few people are uh, familiar with the concept of universal design. I want to focus on universal design for learning. And uh, I want to end with three things that are really quite promising, and one thing that I think uh, I'm going to try to enlist your help in. Um, but just to make sure we're all on the same uh, starting point, I'm just going to start with the concept of universal design. I apologize, lots of people are pretty familiar with it. But here's the school we used to work with um, in Peabody. Here's the entrance to the school. And as you probably know, the, the stairs here are meant to be an access technology, a way to get in the building. Uh, but in fact, uh, for one of the students we first worked with, Matthew, some of you have heard me talk about Matthew before. Matthew has a very severe physical disability and uh, can't uh, walk, talk, point, uh, smile, or uh, any of those things. Um, and he uh, certainly can't get in this building because he's mobile in an electric wheelchair, uh, which he drives with his chin. And uh, he was the, one of our first uh, really challenging motorically uh, youngsters. And we hooked him up, got him so he could drive a wheelchair, but then uh, came the problem of uh, entering the school building. And <clears throat> I really now start the story quite differently than I used to. Because there's really two ways to view the problem. One is to view the problem as Matthew's problem. That is, Matthew <coughs> excuse me, has a disability, and we've got to somehow fix or remediate Matthew. The second way to view the problem is to view it as the school's problem or the culture's problem. That the school is, in fact, disabled and not welcoming to a student like Matthew. Our work recently, thank you very much, Rich, has focused on the latter view of things. How do we help the disabilities that schools have? And I want to say why we do that. If you view the problem as Matt's disability, then it limits the range of solutions you look for. And I want to show you, this is Matthew's joke, not mine. Um, but Matthew's suggestion for what's the assistive technology that would have allowed him uh, to go to school. <coughs> and uh, the thing is that Matthew understood that uh, he was very computer savvy, drove his wheelchair, and did all of his communications through computer. Um, and he knew that inside this big instrument, was a computer, and that with the computer inside, he could drive it. 